basically, you know, money motivation was uh, be happy, you know, with the little things. You know what I mean? Don't 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 just wait on the major things to happen. You know, but it was basically like if the sun is shining, you know, you're supposed to be great, you're supposed to be happy for that. Basically. So, you know, I liked it, but if it applies to us specifically, I like this this motivation. This is my guy, this is my guy, that's Kobe Bryant. The reason I chose Kobe Bryant for intensity is because that's the most intense basketball player I know. Intense. Look at that face. That's the Mamba mentality. That's what that face is called. The Mamba mentality. My favorite NBA player of all time right there. It's the Kobe Bryant. All right? Intensities. So, guys, real quick, before we get into intensities, I really just want to state that when it comes to studying for your board, this chapter, not to say it's not important, but to say the Ten Commandments at the end of this chapter, that's the summary of this chapter. That's basically what you need to know when you study. Before this class, you do have to know the intricacies of intensities. Mm -hmm. Okay? Alright. So, all right. So, during this chapter, we're going to define the five key words related to the intensities of pulse waves, discuss spatial and temporal considerations. Those are those are kind of like the subdivisions of intensity, okay? Mm -hmm. Remember I said because the, the the beam, the beam isn't uniform, right? Mm -hmm. if we know that with uh, according to our biggest parameters, amplitude, power, and intensity, as the beam propagates, it's gonna lose in, lose strength, lose uh, size, lose magnitude, right? So those are what the biggest parameters describe. Alright? And remember I also told you toward the center of the beam, that's where it is most intense. Alright? So that's why we can't just always describe intensity in just, you know, with the, the watts over over area, right? Watts over centimeters squared. That's why we have to break it down a little further with with, with, talk, with respect to space and respect to time. So that's why this chapter is important because um, you can't just describe intensity just uh, in a single numerical value. All right, we're also gonna interpret the methods for measuring intensity and identify the Ten Commandments of Intensity, all right? Dude, that's, the, that's that game winning face right there, guys. So, we know intensity has been defined as the concentration of energy in a sound beam, or a beam's power divided by its area, correct? Units of intensity would be, guys, watts over centimeters squared, okay? Like I just said, simply reporting uh, Intensity as a new single numerical value is not always sufficient because the intensity of a beam, of the intensity of the beam, is not the same over space and time. Okay, <coughs> intensity of the beam is not the same over space and time. Okay, however, intensity is reported in different ways because of the non-uniformity non makes it difficult to quantify. Okay, so if I measure the intensity right when it comes out of the transducer, and if I measure it ten centimeters distal to that. Then the, the intensity is going to be different, okay? And then it depends where in the beam you measure that intensity as well. So the time and the space matters when we're talking about intensity. Okay. All right. So our key words I broke it down into the two subdivisions of uh, intensities. First one being spatial, and that refers to the distance or space. An ultrasound beam. Um, does not have the same intensity at different locations, all right? So remember I said the beam, um, for the purposes of the book, guys, everybody's, can y'all flip to the, the next page on intensity? Everybody see uh, the figures on there? Figure 5-1 uh, and 5-2. The purpose of the, this book, you see they, they always use um, single, single PZT transducers, right? For the, for, the cap for the capabilities of explaining. But we know that the transducer has multiple, two, some of them even have 350 uh, PZT elements in it, active elements in it, okay? PZT active elements are ceramic. You'll hear me say all of those terms meaning the same thing. All of those meaning our, our PZ, piezoelectric material, all right? So, for the purpose of this book, it does that a lot. So I know that it just looks like it's like it's just one 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 PZT element, but I think they just did that for the purpose of explanation. All right. So again, spatial refers to distance or space. Okay. And and meaning that's in cross section, guys. That's in cross section. Okay. So remember I said the beam is a um, is an hourglass shape. Beam is an hourglass shape. Like this, it comes out of the transducer like this. 
meaning our beam, not not I know that beam, how that beam looks in a book again, that's a single element transducer event. Okay? But our beams that are multiple element transducers, they they are in the shape of an hourglass, okay? So if I was to like take this section out, like I said, the beam is the shape of the transducer. So if I would take this section out, the beam in transection and cross sectional would be would appear as a as a sphere, as or as a circle. Okay? So basically when we're talking about spatial, we're talking about not the length of the beam or the word travel. Remember, this would be traveling over time, right? If I'm going this way, it would be traveling over time. I'm talking about taking a single spot out of that beam and turning it and determining that intensity in that spot, okay? In that in that particular space. Alright? So when we are talking about spatial um, intensity, it has two other words associated with spatial intensity. One being peak. You guys know what peak means. We know that's the maximum value. All right. The other being average. You know, in mathematical terms, we know the average is the middle value. Okay. Middle value. Okay. So, spatial. Our first term refers to distance or space. Distance. And then once we get a little deeper, we'll start talking about spatial resolution and temporal resolution. Remember we're talking about spatial resolution. That, we're, that most of the time we're talking about axial resolution. We're talking about spatial resolution. Okay. Our next term would be temporal. And temporal simply is referring to time. Okay. Temporal refers to all time, meaning our transmit time, our pulse duration, and our and receive. Okay. Both of those together, transmit and receive, that's our pulse repetition period, correct? Right? All right. A pulse ultrasound does not have the same intensity at different times. Again, as the sound propagates, it tends to lose energy, right? Over over time. All right. So, also we have pulse. Pulse refers only to the transmit time or our pulse duration, correct? And that's the only time that that's our, that's basically our on time. Pulse. It's only measuring that the pulse itself. Okay. A pulse ultrasound does not have the same intensity at different times. Pulse is the average intensity for the pulse duration only. Mm -hmm. okay. Pulse is, again, it's not associated with the off time. When we're talking about pulse, we're only talking about the pulse portion of that sound beam. Okay. Remember, we're going to sit on the sound and out in the pulse, and we're going to listen, wait for that sound to come back. We're going to sit another pulse out, wait for that sound to come back. Okay. So most importantly, remember, spatial refers to distance or space, and forward refers to time. So the strength of a beam varies depending on the measurement point. Again, if I was to measure, if I was to measure the, this beam at different points, at different points, then all my intensities would be different, which is why we need this chapter because we just can't describe a beam as just as one number because it's not it's not uniform. It's not the same across the across the space or the time of that beam. Okay. Um, the intensity varies all the time with pulse ultrasound depending on whether the system is transmitting or receiving. And there are several different methods that are used to describe the ultrasound beam intensity. We're gonna talk about those. Hopefully you guys read a little bit about it. And they evaluate tissue exposure to sound injury. The main reason why intensities are important is because they're uh, are especially important in the study of bio effects or how the sound beam affects the body, right? And remember, ultrasound is still so young. It's so young of a modality that they're still they're, they're still trying to figure out lifelong effects of ultrasound. Okay. All right. And it's just the illustration. Similar, I couldn't find that same illustration in the book, but this is kind of the illustration that the book has, just basically showing you that the beam is more intense in the middle, in the middle of the beam, and it's is weaker on the outside of the beam. Okay. This is the beam and cross section. If I just had a measuring device, say I measure right here, my 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 intensity would be higher on the inside of the beam, and then lower around the periphery of the beam. Those, are Those are just random numbers. I'm just they're just random numbers that are just using to represent it intensity mm -hmm. or strength or amplitude. Okay, so 60 it will be of course that's the strongest in the center of the beam and it's weaker all the way around there. Okay. That's not to say, I'm not saying that 
because I see these numbers are different. That's not saying that all oh, the left side of the beam is weaker than, it's just a graphic I found to illustrate it, guys. Just a graphic, don't read too much into the numbers, all right? Other than it being higher in the center and lower in the periphery, all right? So let's talk about spatial considerations, guys. Spatial referring to distance or space, okay? I couldn't find any Kobe space or Kobe time in these. All right, so our spatial considerations are uh, spatial refers to location or space. Again, it may sound like I'm saying this a lot, but beam intensity varies depending on the, the location and is stronger in the center. Love this, I wish I had a flashlight. I was trying to get one from Ms. Shepard, Ms. Laura don't have one, so I can come in here and flash for you guys. But you know when you have a flashlight on, the center of the flashlight is the most intense part of the beam and you kind of see glares from the outside, right? That's like a great example to show um, how an ultrasound beam is. Not a great example to show sound because, you know, that's a light wave, of course, right? So I like to really like that flashlight example that they use. This is why uncertainty can arise because we were asked to measure the intensity. Just to also think about this as well. When you have a flashlight and you have it on, you have your hand right there. Isn't it a lot hotter right there than if, you, if your hand is like way back here in the flashlight, right? That's also a form of intensity. That's energy transferring from light to heat, right? So let's remember all, all, all waves transfer energy from one form to another, okay? So it's a lot hotter right at the, at the source than it is in distal to the source, okay? So, that, that, so when we're talking about measuring the intensity of a beam, then what should we report? You know, how do we determine what's what? You know, is it always five centimeters from the source? Is it always as it coming out? As it's coming out, because we know it's gonna be higher as it comes out, and then it's gonna taper down as it travels, right? Okay, so there are two reasonable possibilities for spatial considerations. Those two uh, spatial considerations, Kobe on the second championship right there, guys. Two ways to measure spatial intensity are, guys, I kind of made these like a, like a, you know, when you go to wing stop or something, you, you're trying to determine which wings to get, if you can handle the spicy or not. I tried to use my little fire to show you which one are, would be a higher intensity and a lower intensity, okay? But that's why those little fire, uh, little fire graphics are right there. So our two, um, our two ways to measure spatial intensity would be our spatial peak intensity and our spatial average intensity, okay? Our spatial peak intensity, our intensity, uh, spatial peak, um, that's the beam's intensity at the location where it is maximum, okay? That's the beam intensity at the location. Where is it likely to be maximum at? When? The center. Thanks, all of my wings again. But that would be the center of the beam. That would be the center of the beam, okay? So, we're going to have I spatial peak. I spatial Okay? And the second way to measure uh, intensity, remember, spatial concern is concerning the cross-sectional anatomy of the beam at a, at, at a certain point, okay? The cross-sectional anatomy of the beam, not the time of, not the time or distance traveled of the beam, okay? So our average, spatial average intensity, our intensity spatial average is the average intensity across the beam's entire cross-sectional anatomy, okay? So if we were to take, sorry, go back so far, off, this would be 60, but if I was to take all of these numbers and average them, they, 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 would, they would be lower than 60, right? So that's, that's how we would get our spatial average, okay? It would be the average over the cross-sectional anatomy of this beam. Uh, it's not really homogeneous? No, it's not homogeneous. Remember, it's stronger in the center. Yeah. It's stronger in the center, so definitely not homogeneous, okay? Of course, it only makes sense that the spatial peak intensity is always higher than the spatial average, right? because the average would be taking all the intensities concerning that beam and averaging that number out. The spatial peak intensity is just taking one spot where the, the beam has the highest intensity. Okay? You're just taking one spot where the beam has the highest intensity. Those are two ways to measure beam intensity concerning space. You guys remember, spatial peak intensity, spatial uh, average. All right? When we get far from the center, it will be um, less. Less intense. And it, it be, uh, this side and this side, it will be equal or not? Maybe, maybe. It should be, 
It mm. should be like that. Can't see our graphic right here. Guys, again, across the space of the tra the space of the beam right here, you see in the center, the spatial peak intensity will be, you see how it's in the center of the beam? Mm -hmm. It's in the center of the beam right there? That would, and our spatial average intensity would be uh, across this section of the beam, that would be the whole average of the uh, intensity in that space. Okay, so just take this this graph right here. It's a cross-sectional anatomy, a cross-sectional uh, image of a sound beam. All right, same thing right here. Same thing right here. This is just another one right here. See our spatial peak intensity is always the highest. See if, if we're measuring intensity, it's always going to be high compared to the spatial average intensity. So our spatial peak, you see, it have an arrow pointing to the center mm -hmm. of the beam where we should get our always get our spatial peak. And our spatial average would be somewhere like in the middle. See, we have the, the the very the very highest intensities. Then we have around here the periphery with the very lowest intensities. The spatial average would be somewhere in between the spatial peak and the space and the, the highest and the lowest. Okay, that's how we're going to determine our spatial average intensity. All right. Spatial considerations before we move on to temporal considerations. I want to go to uh, how we, uh, when we scan uh, uh, organ, if we have a stronger intensity in the middle, uh, it will not affect the picture. It used to, but now the machine, that's a good question actually. It used to, but now the machine accounts for that. Because they used to, have, you know how we have TGCs, the mm -hmm. time gain compensation, that's that's accounted for the temporal consideration, the distance mm -hmm. travel, right? They also used to have like, um, I forgot, I think it's called AGC, where you could adjust the intensity of the beam on the side, the side level, mm -hmm. for that reason exactly. Mm -hmm. But now the machine, they already integrated where they kind of average the pictures out mm -hmm. for you already. But it is, if you look on um, that old, the machine, the one with the, the big TV on it, the number machine number three. If mm -hmm. you look on that one, it has I think I think it's called LGC. I believe that's what it's called. It has a, it has 